G'day guys, welcome back to Reach Me or Teach Me. Uh, something a little bit different for you today. Uh, I have been on this NFL learning journey and uh, I've been dragging a few of you along on the way with uh, some rugby league stuff and there's been a little bit of interest in the comments. Quite a few of you have actually come back and, and have had questions and wanted to know a little bit more about the game. So I've been scouring the internet to try and find rugby league content that is suitable for reacting to that Americans will understand. But the reality is just about all of the content out there assumes that you've grown up with the game and have all of the prior knowledge that is required. Now, something that I've discovered in my NFL learning journey is it's really it's really made it easier for me to sink in by going right back to the very basics and explaining things like the, the general positions and stuff like that. So I have made a video. I could not find anything on the internet anywhere that explained rugby league for Americans, except for those couple of meh videos done by Nin, um, and the one that I did yesterday, which talked about the very, very basics, a little two minute video. But this one is designed to give you a bit of an overall uh, idea of A, our positions, some of the terminology used in the game and how it compares with your terminology, but also there's a series of offensive sets that are run at the end and I break them down and explain how the rugby league offense and defense sort of works. Um, and I think if you hang in there, guys, I think you'll really enjoy the video. It's the first one I have ever done. So leave me some feedback, comments, let me know your thoughts on it. I'm sure there are things I could have done better. Uh, but look, if there's anything that I can help with, by all means, ask a question. I'm happy to answer it in the comments below. What I need from you is I need you to share this video. Get it onto the book faces, out onto the Snapper chats and the Instagrams. We need that because basically anything that I can do to grow this channel is going to be much, much appreciated. I can do the content, I can react to certain stuff, but I need you guys to like, comment, subscribe, obviously. Most of you have already done that, but I think if you can share the video to anyone, any friends or family members, anyone that you think that might be interested in Rugby League, um, and if you watch this video and you think, you know what, oh, my friend Ralph, I think he'd understand this, and this would be a good one for him to look at. Send All right, guys, first step in understanding rugby league is understanding some of the terminology that you'll hear if you're watching a game. Uh, you'll understand the basic concepts that we've got here. Uh, what we call a tackle is what you guys call a down. Each team gets six tackles per set. This is referred to as a set of six. Uh, they need to score on that set of six tackles, or if they fail to do so, they will punt generally to put the opposition team as deep as possible and make it as hard for them to go the full length of the field and score on their set of six. Uh, what we call the play of the ball is what you guys call the snap. Essentially, the tackled player gets up and plays the ball or snaps it back to the person who receives it, and they will then pass it generally to the quarterback who will then facilitate a play. Uh, the next term, a hit-up, that's what you guys just call a rush or a run. It's usually a, a larger guy like a running back or an offensive lineman. Get the ball and just run hard into the defense. Um, they do this for many reasons, but uh, we'll clarify a little bit more detail about that down the track. Uh, your fourth downs, again, we have six tackles. We call it the last tackle. Uh, it's when a team has already completed five tackles of their six. The ref will then shout, last tackle to let them know they've got a score on this possession or they will lose it. Um, a lot of the times you get really loud raucous crowds too and the players can't hear the referees so the referee will also hold their arm high in the air with all five fingers extended so that the players who can't hear them can see that this is the fifth tackle completed and this one is our last. The next term there, um, a very simple one, what you guys call a touchdown, we call a try. For the life of me, I will never know why we actually have to touch the ball down and it's not called a touchdown. You guys don't, but it is. It, it, it's something that will always confuse me. Uh, the last one there is probably not going to happen too much, but uh, essentially what you guys consider a field goal is a little bit like our drop goals, where they're worth one point in our game. They can be taken at any time, and a player must drop the ball and kick it simultaneously as it hits the ground. 
Right, so the next table here has got a list of all of our positions, comparable, sort of, semi-comparable anyway, to your NFL positions, and a little bit of a description of their skill set. The far left column, you'll see the player's numbers. Our numbers we don't choose, they are definitive and based on what position you are playing. So number one in our game is always the fullback. Incredibly crucial position, probably the most crucial position on the field. They act as like a hybrid of a tight end, wide receiver, and even a sort of extra quarterback. Um, they, on defense, become basically the free safety. They're fast, they're strong, they've got good hands and great IQ. Uh, they need to play multiple roles depending on the situation. Now we have two wingers, the right winger and the left winger. Uh, these guys are like our wide receivers. They're fast, agile, athletic guys. They finish the plays that are created by the playmakers. Inside them, you've got the left and right centers. They are essentially like having two separate tight ends. Um, one on either side of the field. They're fast and strong. It's sort of a hybrid role. They're good finishers, but they're usually much bigger than the wingers, and they play a great role on defense because the wingers are generally smaller, faster, slight guys. Um, so, And that's where all the offense and attack comes. Conversely, because we don't have offensive and defensive setups, all the players stay out there the whole time. The wingers can be a little bit of a liability on defense. So they will have usually a nice, good, strong center standing just inside them that acts like a help defender for them. The next two positions you'll see, number six and number seven, this is probably going to where it starts to get confusing for you guys. We actually essentially have two quarterbacks on the field at any given time. Another way to think of it using basketball terminology would be like having a point guard and a shooting guard on there. One of them, usually number seven, the halfback, they're more of a floor general um, controller of the game. They control the offense. They control the speed of the game. They're usually a really good kicker. They use attacking kicks to either create opportunities or if they think their players need a bit of a rest, they'll put in a defensive kick, which will try and give their, their forwards and their players just some time to recover and recuperate. Uh, think of players like Tom Brady when you think of the halfback. Um, incredibly cerebral, again, full controlling the game. Uh, and then the 5'8", number 6, they act like a secondary quarterback. Um, they're more of a dynamic playmaker. They're usually quick and sort of play off the cuff. They'll spot something that they see the defensive breaking down somewhere. They'll call for the ball, and then they will create a play off that. Um, so a great analogy would be, again, using basketball terminology, uh, someone like Josh Giddy and SGA on OKC, where you've got the floor general who's controlling the actual speed of play, and then you've got someone like SGA who comes in, he's a quick, dynamic playmaker, capable of scoring in their own right, but also really good at facilitating. Uh, another example would be Luca and Kyrie, um, Luca controlling the floor general side of things, and then Kyrie, the tumor Irving, comes in and basically does whatever he wants but incredibly skilled and can create nightmares for defensive teams so that is the backs which are all highlighted in blue now we're going to talk about the forwards now these guys are a little bit more simple to explain they're basically like your offensive linesmen and your running backs so we've got our prop forwards which are our two biggest guys traditionally uh, they're big strong and fit they do a lot of work in the middle of the field both on offense and defense they do a lot of those hit ups that i talked about before and because conversely the other team does a lot of hit ups through the middle of the field these guys are doing a lot of tackles now, that is number eight and number 10, the two prop forwards. In between them is what we call our dummy half. Now, he's, this is the really tricky one. He's kind of like the center position-wise, but not from a physicality or skill set-wise. They're not these big hulking behemoths. They're actually usually quite small. They're, they're sort of what I would say a normal-sized human being is, but they're usually really, really quick off the mark. Great acceleration. They're quick thinkers. Um, what they do is they receive the, the snap and they will actually initiate the play. So they will see something coming up and they'll have a quarterback on their left and a quarterback on their right traditionally. And they will say, all right, I think there's a weakness on the left-hand side. I'm going to quarterback on the left and he's going to create a play for them. 
So unlike your centers, um, which are, like I said, big, tough guys, these guys are tough players, but with endless stamina. Um, they make most of the tackles throughout the middle of the... They will literally lead the tackle count, as well as having to get to every single play of the ball. So they're very fit. Number 11, 12, and 13, these are our lock forwards. Um, they're like our running backs. Essentially, we've got three of them on the field at any given time. The second biggest guys on the field outside of the prop forwards, they do a lot of tackles, a lot of runs, um, and basically operate like a little bit of a hybrid between the big guys and those tight ends on the outside. Um, so yeah, that gives you a little bit of a rundown on our positions and how they're sort of semi-comparable to um, some of your positions. Now, I'm only specifically talking about offensive NFL positions because we're talking about offense in this video. So something for you to consider when you're uh, thinking about what we're talking about here is that our players play both offense and defense. They stay out pretty much the entire time. Uh, so I'm only really talking about using offensive NFL terminology at the moment uh, because this is an offensive analysis video. But again, we, we don't have a, a defensive set that suddenly comes out and takes over when we're on defense. Think of it like a fumble or a, an intercept. Um, where your offense temporarily becomes defense and your defense temporarily becomes your offense. That's kind of like all the time in rugby league. So you have to be multi-skilled. You've got to have a little bit of everything, <clears throat> sort of like mixed football arts, if you'd like. All right, that pretty much covers the positions. Okay, so here you see a traditional sort of scenario. On the left is the defensive side. On the right is the offensive side. Now, I've kind of marked... And it's a flexible thing. The players will shift around. The main scenarios that will stay as they are is the wide receivers will pretty much always be on the outside edges. Same with the tight ends. So the tight ends and wide receivers will more or less stay where they are on the field. The middle third, though, the running backs, the offensive line, the quarterbacks, the hybrid player there in the middle, they will all sort of shift around depending on what's needed. Defensively, you'll see we tend to defend in a straight line. Uh, one of the things that's worth noting is the defensive side has to retreat 10 meters after each tackle. So the snap gets performed, and again, there's no stop in play. So if the defense fails to get back in time, they can get called for offside, which is a penalty to the offensive team, etc. So you have to... Um, I'll talk a bit more about it later in the video, but there's an essence on winning the tackle in order to give yourself time to get back on defense. Uh, the only other thing that's worth mentioning here is you'll notice that that hybrid guy that I've talked about, he becomes the free safety on defense, and the far side wide receiver, they will drop back to become like a strong safety, um, or like a deep cornerback maybe in a, in a, in a cover set. And uh, looking at the offensive scenario now, I have just assumed here that the offensive lineman is the one who's taken the initial tackle. So he's played the ball or snapped it back to the center, which you'll see here. He's played it. He's snapped it back to the center. Standing to his left is the quarterback one. And he's going to have basically a quarterback on his left-hand side and then a quarterback out on his right-hand side. There's running backs and offensive linesmen that are next to those guys, and they are usually set as sort of decoy runners. Um, the first two or three tackles of a set, they'll receive the ball for those hit-ups, and then later on in the tackle count, um, the kill quarterbacks will use them as decoy runners, and they'll actually spread the ball wide. We'll cover a lot more of that on the in the video as we go through, but this here is just a still image, which sort of gives you a bit of an idea of how the offensive players will line up. So you'll notice here, I'll pause the video, that initially number nine, which was our center, he's received the ball. He's passed it over here to number six, which was our quarterback number two, the shooting guard, if you'd like. Uh, in behind him is number one there. Now, he's the fullback. He's that hybrid position that he create, He operates however he sees as needed. So at the moment, you'll see he's sliding out, knowing, okay, I now need to be an option to potentially receive the pass, or also, alternatively, he's going to run around behind this guy and then create further play out wide. Now, you'll notice the defender here. Notice his jersey number, number seven. So he is our quarterback. All right, on the opposite side of the field, he's now having to make defensive decisions under pressure, and they're not necessarily known for their defense because they are offensive playmakers and, you know, brilliant offensive talents, and it's hard to be good at everything. So, quarterback number two, the shooting guard. 
He receives the ball. He's got an option here. Now, this guy here is like a running back. He's a lot bigger than this quarterback. And the option number one is he can pass it to him and he can essentially steamroll him. You'll notice the markings on the field. They're only 10 meters away from the try line. So if he gets that ball and he steamrolls into him, there's a really good chance that they actually score anyway. But... There's a better play on option because he can see that they've actually got a 7-4 to four overlap out on the left-hand side created by the, the fullback also coming over. So previously it was a 6-4, to four, now we've got a 7-4. to four. So he decides to skip this inside lead runner and he continues to spread the ball out wide. He's also, you can see where he's looking. So he's looking, and with his peripherals, he's seeing what's going on out here, but he's also sizing up these outside edge defenders. And he can see that his head is turned, and he's looking at this lead runner, because he knows this guy can't tackle him. So if he gets the ball, number four here is saying, I have to be ready to make that tackle. So the playmaker, the shooting guard, he here is taking... All of this in in a split second, just like your quarterbacks do, and he's taking advantage of what he sees. So he spreads it out to the fullback, who now becomes an additional playmaker. And all of a sudden, they've got a serious overlap. Again, number seven can't do anything. Number four has now had to readjust, and he's had to suddenly shift his momentum back out to the outside and slide across. As we freeze it there, you can see the job that this poor guy had to do. He had three, def uh, three players of his own that he had to worry about, and then he also had to try and protect number seven on the inside. So he was no chance. That's where if I skip it back a little bit, skip it back to here, and this is where he makes the decision to go, all right, play number one would be through the middle. That's a 50-50. This guy could tackle him. It's maybe, maybe not a try. But he knows if I get that ball out wide to that overlap, that is a guaranteed score. So, again, decision making on the fly. Quarterbacks have to, the quarterback shooting guard, in this case, he's our 5 8. They have to be able to make those dynamic play decisions. And as soon as you get into this position, again, it is three on one, and there is no way you can stop it. Right, so here is a aerial version of that same play. So again, this guy here is normally the one who receives the snap. But he's identified the fact that there's this huge open space out to the left. So in order to f speed up the ball getting out there, he's come out of that center position. And he acts as an interim receiver of the pass to get it out to the quarterbacks quicker. So the lines on the ma on the map, as you can see it, you'll see this guy's going to run an outside route. These two are going to run inside routes to give options as he moves laterally across the field. So he'll have these two players coming back on the inside, which creates issues for these initial defenders. Do they go left? Do they go right? And then they've also got the outside runner plus these two trailers as well coming through. So there is um, plenty of options out on the left-hand side. The key is getting the ball out there before the defense can slide across and fix the numbers. Again, freeze it right here. This is the moment that you saw before where old mate was pointing. And this is the smaller defender. So again, you've got a significant overlap already. One, two, three, four, five versus three. Okay, so again, you've got that two-man overlap, and this is that initial lead runner option that they can go with, but he can see the depth that they've got, and he can see that they're short on the defense. So the key play here would be to continue to spread it wide. Wide receiver, in for the touchdown. Now, before I go too far with this, so this is our center that I was talking about before. You can see they're not a big guy. They're a nimble, fast, speedy, accelerating guy. Now, these two players here on the defensive side are called the markers. What they're supposed to do traditionally is one will split to the left and the other one will split to the right. And that's just to essentially cover this man here getting too far in either direction. Now, what you'll notice here is this center bursts out to the left, and these two markers make a defensive mistake in that they both follow him. So they both follow him in that way, and he now acknowledges that I've got an opening down on the inside, 
for my big boy who's crashing into the paint. So he sees this as he takes off, sees that these two have gone that way, and this guy's a big boy. These guy, if he's running full speed and he catches that ball at the right spot, he is going to be hard to stop. Short pass on the inside. This guy has just, he, he's the, the, the fullback, that hybrid position. So he's plugging the gap that he sees, but he's just not big enough or strong enough to stop a full speed prop forward. And they just crash over. So they're I seeing there that number nine makes the mistake. He goes the wrong way. One then has to try and fill that gap. Actually, let me take that back just a little bit. That's a really good... So from this angle here, you'll see that number nine, he's already shading left. He should continue to go that way. 15 has this right-hand side covered. Number one, that's that hybrid guy. So he's going, all right, there's a gap here that's too close to the ruck. I need to fill that for now. But number nine makes the mistake of going right. And that's where the center realizes I've got a gap here. And he splits back left. And if they don't do something about it, he can run through and score himself. But he sees the big boy on the inside. Now the tackle, tackled player has landed on his knees and elbows. So he is able to get up quickly and play the ball or snap it. Um, which the defense, as mentioned before, they've got to retreat each time. Um, so if he can get up and play that ball quickly while they're still in retreat mode, that just creates so much more time and space for the playmakers to be able to be effective and create something. Now, conversely, as the tackler, what you want to really try and do to win the tackle is you want to try and get this the runner onto their back so that they at least have to roll over and get up off their hands and knees, which does give the defense all the time they need. It's that one, one and a half seconds for them to get back those extra few steps, and all of a sudden they've got a set defensive line that the playmakers have now got to really work hard to break. So this is quite crucial. If you think of rugby league as like a little bit of a non-stop version of NFL, and the tackled player just gets straight up and snaps it immediately. Now you can imagine as a defensive player, how difficult that is when you're in retreat mode to try and adjust, change your momentum, switch directions, etc. Um, it can create havoc. So our playmaking and our, uh, our play designs, if you'd like, are much more a freelance dynamic uh, scenario. Usually what teams will do is they will use the first two or three tackles in a set They'll run up the middle with those hit-ups that I was talking about using the running backs. That's to try and create this sort of opportunity. And it'll be the first two, the guy might get rolled onto his back. Then all of a sudden they see this guy gets up quick. Now we've got an opportunity to pounce and that's when we send it out wide. So just wanted to freeze it there because that's a really pivotal thing. And you'll hear it a lot where they'll talk about uh, players winning the tackle and that basically will determine, and they'll talk about play of the ball and the speed of the play of the ball, which is essentially speed of the snap. That makes a huge difference to how the offense is because it makes a huge difference to how well set the defense is. Gets up nice and quick and plays the ball, and that's the key. Gets up really quick. Now what we've got, if I freeze it, we've got the center receiving the snap, and again, he's identified that they have two players on the right compared to the green teams, one, two, three, four. So if I get, if, do my maths really quick, this is what he's doing in his head, do my maths really quick, two and four, we've got a two-man overlap on the other side of the field. So initially, he's instantly thinking, I've got to go left. Now, this guy here is number seven, so he's the, the quarterback number one, the Tom Brady-style uh, point guard, uh, Tom Brady-style quarterback, I beg your pardon. And then this guy, I believe, out here is number six, so he's that dynamic guy. Now, if they go to this guy then he will probably end up switching it back left anyway. So if this guy makes a mistake and passes it right, usually this guy's clever enough to then instantly switch it back over to the left. But you'll watch as this play unfolds. So we've got a lead runner in the front, and again, he's doing that. He's a big boy. He's charging hard, just like you saw in the previous play. They cannot sleep on that, because if he's, if he's big enough and strong enough and running fast enough, he will just crash through the defense. 
Conversely, you've got a wraparound runner running in behind that. Now, they can pass it to him and he can continue moving on, or he could pass. So, three options. Senna can pass it into this initial lead runner for a crash play. He can pass it out to this trailing runner behind just to basically continue the ball movement or he can run it play a skip pass where he skips past both of these guys straight out to the playmaker so you had an initial lead runner now you've got a secondary lead runner so essentially it's all just shifted the exact setup those three man plays where you got the person with the ball in the hand the lead runner and the trailer that's all just shifted over to these three players so now you've got the player with the ball in their hands the lead runner and the trailer and again it just creates those multiple options on each particular pass the defense has to continually adjust and continually have to shift their shape so if this guy is not not running as well if he's not running that line that they just showed then this defender can comfortably sit out wide knowing that the ball is going to go that way. But because the, the, the offense has that inside option, it just means the defense has to pinch a little bit, which creates those opportunities out wide. Beautiful flick pass, touch pass, whatever you want to call it, uh, straight out to the wide. All right. <clears throat> so again, as we've talked about that little three-man set where you've got the ball handler, You've got the lead runner, and then you've got the trailer. Now, again, if you're noticing the jersey numbers, this is number six. This is the shooting guard who's got the ball in behind him as the point guard. And guy running in the middle here, he is essentially the running back or even an offensive. Actually, he's probably an offensive linesman. So he's creating that crash option, and then we've got trail runners running behind. Now, he looks like he's going to pass into that lead runner but he passes straight back to his quarterback in behind here. Now, at this stage, the defense has actually still got a reasonably good chance of stopping this play. Even though they're a little bit stagnant, they're a bit on their heels, um, they are still essentially in position. Now, what he does there is you've got... Okay, freeze it there. So he's running this lateral line. And then you've got a wraparound or, or like a handoff um, sort of option coming around behind him. Now, he fakes that handoff pass to this wraparound runner, which again freezes this defender here, gives this guy here something to think about, um, ultimately just giving him a little bit more space to skip out wide. And again, if we start doing the math, if number seven can take this guy out of the play by assuming he's going to have to tackle him. All of a sudden, you've got two defensive players left, and there's one, two, and there's a third offensive option out there, and the wide receiver's off screen. So the little fake handoff creates the doubt in the minds of defense, and then again, you've got a switch runner. So I'll just tell you, oh, I've got to take it back a little bit here, sorry. So... Now, okay, so watch what this guy here does. Now, he was originally running that straight line, that sort of parallel with the out, um, with the sideline. Now, he, sw he sees that this guy here, which is that fullback, that hybrid player again, he's seeing, an, I've got to come into this line, create more of an opportunity. So this guy instantly cuts back in on the inside, operates as a decoy lead runner for this trailer behind. And again, it's just these little subtle little things that you'd never pick up on if you didn't know what you were looking at. Um, that little handoff fake creates problems for this guy. This little cutback creates problems for this guy. Same with this guy. So now all of a sudden the defenders have got to make these split second decisions as to who to tackle. And the playmaker, if they're really good at what they're doing. Oh, look out. And in the end... It's just bread and butter for that wide receiver. So you can see what I mean. With those guys are the finishers. They will finish and execute the plays that are executed by the playmakers. Now this last one here, <clears throat> just a totally different scenario. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, frog in my throat. Uh, so this last one here, again, you've got the quarterback with the ball in his hands. He's received it from the center, number nine. Snap's gone out. Pass goes over to number seven. And look, you'll see these lead runners again. So he's running back on the inside, this guy here, to give the defenders, oh, we can't just sprint across. We can't just slide too hard. We have to sort of hedge our bets. 
What he notices, though, is this gentleman here rushes out of the line. So again, I've talked about the line, the, the defensive line. So in rugby league, we defend in a straight line. <clears throat> Still got that frog. We defend in a straight line. Because what happens is if a player rushes out, that suddenly creates this little pocket in behind them. Now, the, the quarterback, this is how smart and how reactive these guys are, right? He sees this guy step out of the line. He then shapes to kick the ball because that's an option in rugby league. You don't have to pass it. He kicks the ball. If he is to kick it, he's going to place it in here for one of these guys to sprint onto the ball. These guys have got to stop and turn around and then get back to the ball. These guys are running at full speed. So if he kicks that ball into this little space in behind, they've got a really good chance of scoring. But again, so he sees this guy come out of the line. Shapes to kick. As soon as he sees the cornerback, I'm going to say, the cornerback, because he is essentially the, the far right-hand side defender, he sees his teammate come up too far. He then goes, oh, crap, now I've got to come back and cover the kick just in case they kick it, because old mate was shaping to kick it. So between this defender coming up too high and then stuttering and staggering when he realizes he's come too high, the cornerback coming over and cover defense, this guy then instantly cancels his kick and decides to spread the ball wide. Here it is one more time. I'll pause it a bit. So again, that defender's the guy that I'm talking about. He comes out of the line. At this stage, he's still running. Watch how quick this all unfolds. Where he switches back, shapes to kick it, cancels the kick, throws the ball out past the two lead runners. Because again, they had two guys cutting back to give the defense headaches. Passes it out wide, and then it's just a simple hand to spread a simple matter of spreading the ball until it gets out of the open. So there you have it, folks. Some rugby league offense in a nutshell. Obviously, just like your game, there's a million different varieties and complexities and things to it. But that gives you a pretty good idea of our positions, the terminology involved, and some of the repeated um, generic style offensive sets that you'll see throughout a game. So I hope you really enjoyed that video, guys. It's taken me a lot of time. I've had four nights in a row where I've barely slept. Just I've had all these ideas and things running through for the video. So if you are still here and you are still watching, I want you to let me know in the comments. Uh, what can we say? State of origin. See you in the next one, guys.